Hey everybody, welcome to Northern Lion Plays Invisible Ink. Invisible Ink, if you didn't see the Let's Look at or haven't been following the uh, news of uh, upcoming uh, semi-big time video game releases, Invisible Ink is the new stealth action, well not stealth action, stealth squad based tactic strategy game a little bit like a stealth XCOM but it's kind of a rudimentary although easily communicable way of describing uh, the way that the game works and this is of course from Clay who you probably know from Don't Starve and Mark of the Ninja and the Shank games and etc etc I like it a lot I've been playing a lot of it uh, and I wanted to play more after the let's look at the campaign tends to be relatively short in the you know range of maybe six to seven hours so it's meant to be replayed multiple times almost like a little bit of a lunch break roguelite style almost like a you know dungeon of the endless binding of isaac sort of thing like a micro shrunken version of the XCOM campaign which makes it uh really watchable i think so we're gonna get started here and uh ignore this basically this is the let's look at this is a failed recording because my microphone had some bullshit electrical noise we're gonna start up a new game here uh we're gonna play this uh, the story we're not gonna play the tutorial and we're gonna be on experience level difficulty here i've done a full campaign on beginner off camera while convalescing from wisdom tooth extraction um we're not gonna do any of the special modes here but just take a look and you can see with custom um there's all sorts of like xcom uh second wave style updates that you can do here you know you can make a longer or a shorter campaign an endless campaign if you want to you know change the power with which you start a mission etc etc um lots and lots of uh different options there but we're gonna try to play experienced it gives us three rewinds no ability to retry level so we get to take back three moves it's not as easy as it seems based on the fact that you know oh in xcom you don't get rewinds yeah but you know you could save scum the shit out of it. Uh, I suppose we could save scum this by just putting it on, on or uh, make it unsafe scumable as well by putting it on Iron Man here. 99 rewinds is a little crazy. So we're going to play on experience with default settings. Uh, and I am going to show the opening cutscene here, even though I showed it in um, the Let's, Let's Look at, because server. this is for Let's the story. So get out. pay attention. Copy that, Central. Copy that. Proceeding to target. Oh. Insertion was clean. Alarm level holding steady. We need to get to the third floor. We can make our way to the server room from there. Any chatter on the comms? Negative. It's silent on all frequencies. They should have detected us by now. Receiving They're on to you. Get out. Get out of there! HQ compromised. We're going to need an extraction. I've got Incognita. Deckard and International are on their way. Get to the roof. I'll cover you. Go! Decker, how long till extraction? 30 seconds. Get us out of here. All right, and that's the intro to Invisible Ink. Basically, uh, that we work for a company called Invisible Ink. We're, we're the operator. We're controlling all the moves, basically. There's a little dialogue here. We've got work to do. Yes. Um, and we've been raided by the corporations. I mean, they give us a little preamble here, but basically the year's 2074. Corporations rule the world. We're kind of undermining them to make sure that, you know, it's a little bit more of a... Uh, uh, an egalitarian society, if you will. But we've been found out and our headquarters raided, so now we have a very limited amount of time to strike back um, before Incognita, which is that superhuman AI-type deal that we've got going on, runs out of power. So I've got a lot of agents unlocked, uh, six of them actually, we're still missing four of them. Those unlock, as far as I can tell, the more net worth that you actually gain as you play through the game, so these are like persistent unlocks. But we're gonna use Decker and International. We use some uh, unique agents during our 
um, let's look at, but these are the agents with which I'm most familiar with. So we have Decker and Internationale. He has a little bit of higher speed and starts with a cloaking rig, which is really, really useful for getting him out of difficult situations. And uh, she starts with better hacking and also wireless emitter, which is super useful for getting extra power because you can hack uh, consoles through walls. That gives you more power with which to hack enemy things with and make your life a lot easier. So uh, we're also going to start with the standard programs, passive generate one power per turn and break one firewall for two power. We can mix it up a little bit. Uh, um, but we're going to start with the, the obvious ones. It's 2074 and corporations rule the world with brutal efficiency. They hit you hard and now you're on the run. You need to strike back, but you'll never win by force. Keep your agents alive with stealth and cunning. Raid the core facilities. I guess it's corpse facilities because it actually is a corporation, it's not like a military corps. For tools and support and prepare your team for the final showdown, the odds are stacked against you. You will fail repeatedly, but each time you will learn more about your adversaries and every restart generates a new world of dangers and opportunities. You have a tough job ahead of you, operator. Don't let us down. There's going to be some voice work. I hope you can hear it. Operator, are you there? Good. I was afraid you didn't make it out. Headquarters is gone. Most of our agents have been captured or killed, and our accounts all frozen. I don't know how the corporations found us, but you can bet they won't give up now that they've had a taste of blood. The Jet's stealth rig should keep us hidden if we keep moving, but Incognita can't survive long on backup power. She's got 72 hours tops. We need to mount a counterattack before then, or we'll be defenseless against their scams. If that happens, we may as well just crash this thing into the ocean. You've never seen the inside of a corporate deprogramming chamber. I won't see the inside of another. Incognita is scanning for targets of opportunity where we can replenish our supplies. Follow her leads and gather what resources you can. I'll run through our contacts and see what favors I can call in. We're going to need all of the advantages we can find in the coming days. All right. So this is our uh, agency loadout. It's just our agents plus our programs we saw earlier. Uh, the way that the game starts is basically you have 72 hours before Incognita's power runs out. You have to do all these missions within 72 hours. Then if you're alive at that point, you'll have a final mission that you have to do. Um, so each mission, you know, with travel time can take eight, nine hours. So you can do the math on that there. You know, we might have eight missions to do. We might have seven to nine missions to do somewhere in there. Um, we get a choice of missions later, and each one of those gives us variable rewards. This is one of the things I like in contrast to XCOM, not to say that one style is necessarily better than the others, but we'll, instead of just being like, now it's time for an alien abduction mission, now it's time for a UFO uh, you know, crash landing mission, now it's time for like a scripted mission, uh, in, in all of these ones we have a choice. Do we want to do missions that give us more credits, missions that give us more agents, missions that give us more weapons, missions that give us more you know, programs for incognita, etc, etc. But for now we have you know, like a mission in Sydney or something it looks like here. Executives Brisbane. are notoriously slack when it comes to network security, and their terminals are full of interesting information. We found a lightly guarded executive complex here. Get in, find the computer, and steal their contact list. Then we'll have our pick of future targets. For our first mission, we don't have any options. We have to do this, and then if we succeed on the mission, we get a map, which gives us the ability to choose missions in the future. Another thing that's cool is that every mission is kind of, it's, it's at the facility of one of these corporations, and each of these corporations has its own unique identity, which makes it a unique challenge when you actually go into the mission. So this is the Kelford and Odin Weapons Foundry. Free from government regulation, K&O has the most advanced weaponry and automated defenses of all the corporations. So in contrast to something like a cybernetics company, where we would encounter like maybe uh, cybernetically enhanced guards. This one is going to be a little bit more drone focused maybe, uh, but at level one, which is the easiest level for guarding, we're probably not going to encounter too much of that. It's probably just going to be relatively basic guards. So we fly over here and then we get to start our mission. We teleport in here, and I'm not going to do too much tutorialization. You can always go back and watch the Let's Look at it if you want a more, uh, you know, fine-grained detail of, of how the game works, but I think you're going to figure it out pretty quickly. It, Stealth XCOM is not a terrible description of the moment's moment gameplay. Bad news, Operator. They caught us completely by surprise, so we have no firepower with us. The guards' weapons are gene-coded to their owner and useless to us. We're going to have to make do with what we can find along the way. We've beamed you through the security grid. You should be somewhere near the target, but you'll need to look for it. Get the list and find a transport pad to escape. But be quick about it. They noticed a disturbance when we ported in, and their alarm level is already rising. All right. Um, so... The thing I wanted to say is that although it is like XCOM, our mission is not just kill all the enemies and then we win. Or, you know, defuse the bomb and then we win. On this one, we have a couple of primary objectives. Locate the executive terminals and then hack them. That's kind of unstated, I guess. And get out alive. Our mission ends when either our units, our agents die, or we uh, find a teleporter and that allows us to get out of the level after we've preferably already accomplished our starting objectives. So we, we can actually choose to play it uh, very ghost-like here. 
in actuality if we wanted to. But I'm also going to uh, I'm going to spread out a little bit. And we're just trying to get a feel for how uh, our level looks, just in case there's doors over there, but it doesn't look like there actually are. Um, we might spread out, and we can try to be ghosts. Like, we could try to be Sam Fisher from Splinter Cell if we're interested in it. Let's peek in through this door. It does cost an action point to do so, and a little risky there, so I don't think I'm going to go for it. But we will hijack this console. This is why International is so valuable. She gets an extra, because she's level 2 with her hacking ability, she gets 2 power every time she hacks one of these. Uh, 1 power plus 1 bonus. And also, she can hack these terminals through the walls. So Decker is going to be like our... He's going to be our fast guy. He's going to be recon and knocking people out, mostly. International is going to be very much focused on the tech side of things, if we do this properly. We can also access Incognita with the space bar, get a little bit more of like a blueprint style map, and we can see that there's no uh, enemy infrastructure, no cameras, no turrets or anything like that for right now, so we'll just uh, end our turn and, and get ready to move on here. There is a guard, though. Alright, so we should be uh, very careful about this. Let's take... International. I'll talk about the alarm system in a minute here. Let's take International, look through the door. We didn't see anything. Um, we're going to move in just to see what's going on here. And let's take a quick peek um, at what this guard's going to do next. He's going to patrol back through this. So I'm going to try to be a ghost here. You can see the way he's looking. I'm going to put uh, International here. She should be in a blind spot. And then I'm going to take uh, Decker and I'm going to move him out. Close this door so this guard doesn't get suspicious. And we're going to peek through this door, where it appears that there's no guards, and this is also our exit. So I'm actually just going to put Decker um, inside of here, and then close the door. And I am, just as a precaution, I think these are the terminals that we need to hack, by the way. Just as a precaution, I'm going to put uh, International on amb. No, I shouldn't have done that. Cancel the ambush, please. Yeah. Um, because then she would knock him out, which I don't necessarily want. Um... I think that she's not going to get discovered because she's behind this pot. Yeah, we can see the vision cone of the of the guard there as time went by. Okay, so I prefer to do this because the less we anger the guards, the less we have to deal with um, with pinning them. And th pinning them really holds us back here a little bit. We're, we might as well hack this, even though we get less uh, power. Might as well hack it with him because he's close to it. Um, pinning the guards makes it so that one of our agents is basically compromised. They can't do anything else. Uh, while we wait for it to happen, so uh, if we can just get by the guards without having to um, actually engage them, that's much better for us, and we'll try to end our turn in cover here. This first mission should be pretty easy as a result of the fact that it's the first mission. This is like kind of the tutorial without being the tutorial. So International is going to be our, our go-to here. Um, we're just going to take a quick look here and peek around. See what we can find. There's a security... Uh, door over there. We're already in cover, but I'm gonna move us over here uh, and we can get a little bit more vision We can hack this. I think it's time to use incognita to hack this executive terminal We'll talk a little bit more about incognita. This is basically our AI companion Which is the d namesake for the game before they change the name to invisible link But anyway, um, we have a program called lockpick every turn we gain one power lockpick takes two power and breaks uh, one firewall, which is the number represented inside of the red here. We'll eventually find things with two, three, four. I'm not sure if it gets higher than that, but maybe. Uh, firewalls, you know, that can take eight power to break depending on the programs that we have. We can get a lot more programs for Incognita as we play through a campaign here, but it's balanced. The more stuff we get for Incognita, probably the less stuff we get for our agents and vice versa. So, for now, we're going to use Lockpick 1 to uh, hack that. And once we get that, that'll be our main mission objective accomplished. But we also have things like corporate safes here. And we'll want to hack those to get as many credits as possible, especially on these early missions. These are credits located up here. Um, these credits are used to upgrade our agents, uh, buy new weaponry, buy new augments and programs and stuff like that. It's extremely important, and one of the, the things that's coolest about Incognita, uh, sorry, Invisible Link, still a little bit uh, fuzzy on the names there, um, as we end our turn here, is that... Um, there's this uh, this balance between I want to get out of the mission before the alarm goes super high and my life gets hard uh, with at the same time like I want to uh, get as much money as possible. So we're just going to sneak Decker across here and uh, I think it's going to be easy for us to do this without causing, causing, causing too much trouble. Alright, so clever joke. We're going to hack this and that should allow us to get the map which means that we can leave now. When you activated that terminal, it sent out an automated message to change up the guard duty. Be prepared for new patrol patterns. Alright, so by hacking that, they've actually introduced some new patrol patterns, which is probably going to be very bad for me. We'll put uh, Decker on ambush, 
We could just leave right off the bat. It's going to be a real problem if enemies barge in here. Oh my god, they did not spot me. The alarm at level 1, though, basically this means that... Oh, they did spot me. Okay, so actually, um, I don't know if we're going to be able to do anything to stop this guy. Oh, Decker, can you do it, man? He can't quite make it. Oh, that's so frustrating. So she is going to get shot no matter what happens. Which means that this is probably a great opportunity for us to use one of our level rewinds. There's no way we really could have known that, but we probably should have played a little bit more carefully. Um, so, again, I think that... If we just come through here, yeah. So we can repeat the same move we did with Decker. Um, but we probably don't want to actually... Uh, hack the terminal on this specific turn instead let's hack this camera and yeah that'll show us where this guard is and we've got a whole host of other security stuff going on down here um so let's um let's see what this guard is doing we can see him because of the camera he's stationary okay so we're probably gonna have to oh geez she scared me there <laughs> we're probably gonna have to um to bait him into coming out here because i believe that this is the guard that that caught us last time so those rewinds I mean, they're a little cheap, but at the same time, without knowing that, there's almost no way we could have done that. It's still, uh, it's very well balanced. I guess you'll just have to take my word for it. So, um, we gotta bait this guard. I'm gonna hijack this. Five power? Oh my god, this one's huge. I don't wanna hijack it until we hack something else then. So let's hack the secondary server terminal here. I don't even know what that does, but we're gonna do it. Uh, I'm gonna open this door. Yeah, and then this guard gets suspicious, and then we'll use International with Ambush, which is effectively just melee overwatch, and uh, and she can pin him on the next turn. And we'll move Decker over here. We can hack at the end. Like, we can hack those executive terminals at the end. Let's explore as much as we can, because I really want to get a good baseline. Like, I want to get some good credits here uh, to, to make our life work uh, a little bit more easily for us. So, um, she's pinned him. Let's see what her uh, valuables are here. Level 1 security pass card and a cred chip. So I'm going to have International uh, close this door for now. And I'll talk about pinning in just a second. But she got a security passcode, so she can peek through this now. Why can't she? Did I pick it up with Decker by accident? I did pick it up with Decker by accident. That's all right. We can do this. We'll take Decker over here. Transfer items. Give her the level 1 security pass card. And then have her... We, she already peeked, so I just wasted a turn there. But she can unlock the door at least. Can't see uh, much of anything. Pinning. You see this enemy. When we knock him out with the Neural Disruptor, every weapon has its own specs for this, but when we knock him out with the Neural Disruptor, uh, he's down for three turns. However, he doesn't get recovered if we stay on top of him. So we can keep one agent on top of him and kind of do pin management, basically. Um, if we keep one agent on top, then he'll stay down forever, but we can only explore with one agent. Or we can explore a little bit with Decker. And uh, we, we can knock him out again if we wanted to and then just have like six turns, which we might actually do. But for now, let's just open this door with International. And we can see that there's we're going to get spotted if we enter here. So I don't think this is the right course of action for us to take. Instead, let's take International in here. And she can actually see this camera now. So let's hack this camera. And that's probably another corporate safe. Yeah, okay, so we got a lot of corporate safes in here. There will be this laser panel. It'll trip the alarm if we go through it. So... It would be for the best if we didn't. <laughs> uh, there should be a something we can hack at some point which will allow us to, uh, to take care of that. But it's not in here either. Let's do some more hacking for now. We can see inside of here. Um, we can hack this corporate safe. We can hack the nano fabricator. And we can get some extra bonus power out of this. Now, what, what do we do with Decker? I mean, he can, he can make it through here. You know what, I think what we'll do with Decker for now is actually just knock out the agent again. And that should double his uh, his pin time. No, it kept him down for the same amount of time. Alright, well with Decker we're not going to do much of anything then. We'll just keep him there. Now you might be saying, well isn't it overpowered that you can just stand on top of an agent? Or like an enemy? Perhaps, you can see it that way. However, um, the security level's going up all the time. So the alarms are going to go off and we're going to encounter uh, stiffer and stiffer resistance the longer we wait on this. So uh, let's let's have International come in here. And it doesn't look like there's that much in here, so we'll leave that door open for now. We hacked the corporate safe. Um, we'll unlock this door, and we'll enter through here. 
and we'll get ready to come out of this door next time and hack this thing over here. All the while, we'll keep uh, Decker over here, and this is what I really like about it. It's it's such a stealthy game that you know you're sometimes you just have one agent going through this, and it's a huge risk reward thing. Ooh, this is interesting. Hmm. If you if you're on the door tile, you get a different angle on the peak. I think. Ooh, I don't like this. Let's let's open it up. It was a guard. Okay, so we'll put ourselves on ambush here. Hopefully there's not two guards. If there's two guards, we're going to have a problem. But if there's only this one guard, we should be fine. And again, we're just going to keep Decker on um, on pin duty. I really like that there's kind of different styles of play there. The problem now... Oh, my bad on that one. The problem now is that we have two agents, and we're definitely not going to be able to keep both of them pinned while still accomplishing our objectives. So the problem now as well is that, um, you know, more cameras have come back online here, but additionally... Uh, we have, well, let's, let's see what this guy has as valuables, more credits, useful. Um, additionally, we should have closed that door. Uh, let's hack this corporate safe, though. Uh, additionally, for the 400th time, uh, the firewalls have gone up, so it's going to be hard for us to, and it's harder, at least, for us to actually hack stuff. Um, we may want to consider, we can drag bodies if we want to. I don't really want much to do with this nano fabricator. I don't want to spend credits right now. I want to save them for the end of the mission. That's just my personal play style. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what we want to do here. We should hack the executive terminal and probably get out at some point in the near future. So you know what? I think we've done a good job on this mission. There is a corporate safe back here, but I'm going to... If you'll allow me to use the language, I think I'm going to puss out a little bit here. So I'm going to take this route backwards. Um, and she should be able to pin in like two turns maybe. So I'm going to take Decker over here for now. And I don't think this pin's going to come off. I want him to be ready to hack the executive terminal. And then both of us will get out as soon as possible. Alright, so let's look with Internationale here. What's through this door? Is it too dangerous? Not dangerous at all. So she'll run up this way. And yeah, I know we're missing out on a lot of like corporate safes and stuff like that here. Um, but I still think that this is essential. Now, I really I don't want to hack this terminal just yet. We'll end well, we'll put him in a position where he can hack it at least. And then we'll end our turn. So he has the maximum amount of, of uh, action points to get out of the situation. International gets to go again. And it's all important, I think, that she closes this door. This one right here. Then this guard's gonna wake up, he's gonna be suspicious, but he might not look actually over here. And then Internationale can pin here. And you know what? She might just wanna knock him out again to raise his, uh, his time to come back to life. But if she does that, then if this guy comes through this door, she's not gonna be able to ambush him. So I think we wait one more turn before we go for the hack, because the hack is immediately gonna change enemy patrols. Okay, so this is the turn where we go for the hack, and hopefully this works out a little bit better for us in the first opportunity. We hack, we take the site map, this is going to switch up patrols. When you activated that terminal, it sent out an automated message to change up the guard duty. Be prepared for new patrol patterns. This is still going pretty well. Uh, and then we'll put, um... just want to take a look at the map area here. We'll put uh, Decker over here, because he's behind cover. And uh, I do think that we will actually knock out uh, this person again, because they're about to come back to life. And that should reset their pin timer to three turns, which is good for me. And then we'll put her over here, and we'll get Decker ready to ambush, just in case the guy that was here comes through this door. Now, we should also probably hack a little bit. Let's hack this camera twice. And we'll hack this camera as well. That way we won't get caught when we go through that door there, and we'll end our turn. The, uh, the melee attack has a cooldown on it, which is why... Uh, yeah, see? This guy knows what's up. Um, there's a, there's a cooldown on it, which is why we have to be careful about what agent we use for each specific thing. Is this guy still through here? Yeah, where's he going, though? We might not want to... Let's see where he's going to go. He's going this way. Okay, this is perfect, actually. When he turns around, we should still be safe over here. Obviously... This has the potential to be a complete catastrophe if he turns around. But everything, much like Mark of the Ninja, everything is very predictable in the game. Which is good. It doesn't make it easy. It just makes it a puzzle game as opposed to, like, witchcraft. The corporation has brought one more guard patrol into the building. That's level 3. That's oftentimes very bad. But because we're on the other side of the map now, it should be fine. 
Um, so we'll move international over here. This is our teleporter. This is how we get out of the level. Um, that wasn't international that I moved. That was Decker. But anyway, let's peek on this guy. He's going to be coming back this way. Uh, I don't think there's any way to get out of this without ambushing him. So let's just end our turn. He should walk through the door, and this will give us an easy trip to get to the teleporter, which I'm excited about. I would have preferred to, you know, not knock this guy out and totally mess with his brain function. But at the same time, uh, I think this is the right idea. We'll take his credits, and we actually did really well on credits this mission. And uh, then we'll have International go as far in as she can. And I'll go in and I'll close the door just so we completely remove the ability for enemies to find us with line of sight. And that's pretty much going to do it for this mission. It was about as exciting as I was hoping for. We did have to use a rewind. Um, I think it was important to use that rewind. And we missed out on a couple things. So you can see how there's uh, like some min-maxy stuff that we uh, unfortunately were not able to take full advantage of. But we balanced our risk and our reward and we'll exfiltrate here. And that was pretty good. Now let's talk about what happens after the mission. Again, there's going to be some voice work here. So I hope you guys can hear it somewhat effectively. This is our uh, our mission report. It shows us, okay, we hacked four or five consoles. We didn't hack two corporate safes. We didn't hack the power supply for the lasers. But apart from that, we did okay. Uh, we stole 300 credits from guards, and we got 300 credits from safes. Um, we got 1,100 credits total on the mission. It started with 500, I think, I guess, and we got 600 on the mission. This is our net worth, which is like our overall experience in the game. Or at least what we have left. So with 1100, uh, we can upgrade ourselves a little bit. I think it's good to give International even more hacking ability. So at level 3, she gets um, plus 1 power per console hijack. And because she can hack through walls, like at a distance, this is extremely important. So she's going to be our go-to hacker for sure. And then um, Decker, we could save some credits or we could maybe level up his strength. So we can carry one more item before... Uh, Actually getting encumbered. I haven't talked much about encumbrance. We can't upgrade incognito right now. I've re-established contact with Monster. His network picked up the attack just before it hit us, and we're working to trace it back to the source. In the meantime, he's offered to sell us some of his more rarefied stock. Greetings. I don't often perform transactions face to face, but Gladstone is an old friend. I'll contact you when anything becomes available. Thank you, Monster. If we find their central server, we may be able to bring them down. Hello, Or at least distract them long Thank enough you. that they lose our trail. Continue scavenging operations, and I'll keep you posted as more intel develops. Alright, so that's the end of this mission. Uh, that gives us four more choices. So I'll talk more about these on the next one, but I gotta end this episode here. Thanks for watching the first episode of Invisible Ink. If you enjoyed it, it is a series with a little bit more niche appeal, and it's in its infancy. If you're uh, open to stuff like that, consider clicking the like button. It helps me out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want more Invisible Ink every single day, as I will be playing it for the near future. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching. Thunder Bay doesn't get a lot of love in video games. I appreciate you putting some Northern Ontario cities in your clay. Um, anyway. Uh, I'm going to save and quit for now, but for now, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll be back with another one very, very shortly. Don't worry too much about the minutes that I'm killing here, but uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a good game. There will be a link to pick it up on Steam in the video description below as well. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Hopefully, you will join me for that as I buy time until I can find the stop recording button.